I love memory wire. If you've seen any of my projects before, you will know that. I have made lots and lots of memory wire bracelets and I just love them. If you haven't been to my channel before, welcome. It's nice to see you and thank you for joining us. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. It's really great to see you. Today, I am going to make, show you how to make this bracelet. Now, I realized the other day that I'd never actually done a memory wire bracelet with a focal bead. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're gonna do a little bit of design as opposed to just the, here's how to make it. And the reason for that is because I'd like you to be able to make your own and play with different beads and things like that. So let's get started and we will make this bracelet. Oh, by the way, I love this combination of the uh, hematite uh, bicones and the acrylic bicones so much that I also made a necklace. And so if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how to make this necklace let me know in the comment section below and also subscribe to my channel so you won't ever miss a thing and like the video ring the bell you know all of that stuff so that you'll be advised every time I upload a new project and you won't ever miss anything so let's get started Here's what you're going to need to make this memory wire bracelet. Remembering it's got this focal bead in the middle. So we're going to start obviously with our focal bead. This one measures 20 millimeters by 15 by eight wide. It's actually quite a flat bead, so it'll sit nicely and flat against your wrist. And that's quite important. We have here 42 of these purple acrylic uh, bicones and these have an AB finish. I have 38 of these 6mm hematite bicones so these ones are a little different from the acrylic ones and the, in the shape is different. If you have a look here you can see that the acrylic one has quite a point in the middle here. Hopefully you can see that and the hematite bicone has like this flat piece which is quite cool and the two together look absolutely stunning. So 38 of those, and they're six millimeters. You will also need eight of these 10 millimeter glass faceted beads. Now these ones, um, they're, per they're a really dark purple and they work really, really well with my feature focal bead here. Of course, you'll need some memory wire. This is a 5.7 millimeter and I have three rounds of that. As far as tools are concerned, you will need a ruler. This one has, um, you'll need it with centimeters. Um, it works best and I've got here three pieces of 20 gauge wire and these are about 35 centimeters long and I'll show you what I'm going to do with those shortly. You will also need a pair of round nose pliers and of course you'll need some memory wire cutters if you haven't already cut your wire which I have almost cut mine to size. So if we take a look here at the memory wire just so that you can see, oops mine is twisted and that happens with memory wire. So what I've got here is, here's the end of my memory wire, and here's the other end. And I've got two rounds in the middle, which means that it is a three, three rounds of memory wire. And if you haven't used memory wire before, it's really stretchy, it can stretch out and pops back in, and it's really hard and it always keeps its shape, which is why you need memory wire cutters to cut it, because um, it's, it will ruin your standard cutters if you cut memory wire with them. So let's have a look and get started, shall we? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out our beads in the order that we're going to put them on. Now, the reason, I'll just talk a little bit about this and how this works. So with your memory wire focal bead, what you need to do is you need to anchor it in the center here. And if you, if you have a look at what I've done here, I've kind of anchored it with these beads on either side. So I've got my large bead in the middle and several larger beads on either side. And then these beads here are kind of anchoring it in so it doesn't move. Obviously, if you stretch it apart, it will move if you, you know, move it backwards and forwards. But while you're wearing it, you want it to be looking like that so that it kind of sits there and doesn't move much. Now one thing to note, if you have got a bigger wrist, I have quite a small wrist, so if you've got a bigger wrist, you might need a bigger piece of memory wire 
a bigger size, which means of course that you'll need more of your bike owns to um, fill the space. So what we're going to achieve here, trying to achieve, is this piece here, and then just having the bike owns. I just love that combination, it's so pretty, to uh, finish the, the bracelet. So this is where these pieces of wire come in. We're actually going to pre-string onto these pieces of wire so we can work out the design. But before we do that, we need to know exactly how, how far around one of these pieces of memory wire is, one of these loops. So I'm going to measure it. I'm going to put my finger right there on the memory wire where the end is, and I'm gonna stretch it out. Now you won't damage your memory wire doing this, and you're gonna get a, your best approximation of how big this piece of memory wire is, and it's about 19 centimeters. And you'll notice it just went straight back into shape. You don't wanna stretch it too much, obviously, but it, it will go back if you just do that to it. So I've got a 19 centimeter um, length. So I put it on zero, and I measured to where my finger was, which was 19 centimetres. So that's what we're going to work with. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my focal bead onto my one of, one of my pieces of wire. Now the reason we're using these wires is just so that we can get a plan of what we're going to do, which is why I kind of thought about showing you how to design as opposed to just create a bracelet, because this is a really useful tool for later on. Now I've, I've got a couple of my 12, uh, sorry, 10 millimetre um, beads here on either side of my focal bead and that will help to hold it in place. So just popping those on. Okay, so that's the centre piece. this piece of my bracelet. That's that. Okay, so next I'm going to do these pieces and in the middle of this piece I had two of my six millimeter acrylic bicones which I'm going to put on first and one on either side of my 10 millimeter glass faceted rounds. Okay, so you can see here what's happening is those two little bicones are actually tucking it in close to, so that it's close to the, um, the focal bead. So I'm going to repeat that on this one. So we want the small beads to kind of tuck in beside the big bead and that just helps everything to stay nice in its correct place when we wear it. Okay. All right, so there's my focal part of my bracelet. It's really cool, looks good, and it was quite easy to achieve. So looking at the bracelet again, you can see there, there is my focal part. And then what I did was I just alternated the two different bicones here. And I started with a hematite and then I went on the outside one and then I went with an acrylic and on the inside one I alternated that so I started with an acrylic and went with the hematite. So let's start with, um, we'll start with the outside and we're going to thread on first a hematite bead. Just move this down so you can see what I'm doing. Then an acrylic bicone and hematite and I just alternated that. Now you're thinking how do I know how long it's going to be? Well I measured it didn't I? So we're going to work on it until we get to the right length. So half of 19 would be um, eight and nine and a half. So if I look, put this against my ruler here, I'm nowhere near there, I've got a, a couple more to go. So pop some more on. measuring again from the center which is that small between those two small bicones still a little bit further so maybe two more Oop. 
Let's see. Where did it go? So that's actually, it's about, it's a little bit longer than nine and a half, but we're going to leave it and see what it looks like when we're done. And I'm just going to repeat on the other side, and I won't make you watch that, I'll come back when I'm, when I'm done. Now I fed the bicones onto each of my uh, side ones. I did both while I was away, save you watching me. And uh, you'll notice that I started, I've actually started and finished with the hematite one. So for the centre one, I want to alternate that. So I need to make sure that that's going to look the way I want it to when I when these are stacked together on my wrist. And you can see here when I pop when I put this up beside it, an uh, acrylic one will work quite nicely against these hematite ones here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on a hematite bead first. Sorry, I'm going to put on an acrylic bead first, then a hematite one, and just carry on working that. Okay, I've threaded on all, all of my beads. Now I want to measure them, just to make sure that they are the right size. So I'm just gonna pop this ruler up a bit so you can see. And if I line my first bicone here up with my zero, and you can see here that it is exactly uh, 19 and a half when I stretch it out. And obviously my other one is exactly the same size, and my other side and my middle piece if I hold it there, is actually 18 and a half. So I'm going to put another bicone on either end. Now the trick is, does this actually work? <laughs> Will it be the right size when we feed it on? If I measured correctly, yes. Uh, possibly not, because it is quite hard to measure stre those, that stretchy wire, but we'll see. You know, you can always un unthread it. So next what we're going to do is, um, the other reason I did that is because I didn't want to finish with a hematite bicone here. So you thread these this way, and then this way, and this way, and I didn't want it to be two hematite beads together. So let's have a look and see how we thread it now. So I'm taking my wire. Now I have got a little bit of extra here as a crossover, and I always cut it a little bit longer so that I can work with it because sometimes it stretches out a bit when you work and you also need some space to make your loops. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a loop in the end of my memory wire. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and it doesn't want to be a very big loop so I'm putting it in between the jaws of my round nose pliers making sure that it doesn't stick up so I can't feel it between the jaws sticking up past the jaws there. And what I'm going to do is just, I just adjust it in my grip, because memory wire is quite hard to turn to um, make loops in because it is so hard. So I'm, I've got it about probably a half a centimetre or so from the end of the pliers, because I, as I said, I don't want a huge loop. And I'm just going to twist away from me, twist my hand away from me, holding this piece with my thumb. Now my hand will not go any further, so I'm going to take the pliers out I'm going to put it back in on the lower jaw at that same spot, and I'm going to twist some more until I can't really go any further. Now my memory wire, uh, because it's hard, it didn't close the gap. You can see there it's still just open a little bit, so I'm going to do the same thing again. And there's my loop. Notice that I pointed my loop towards the inside of the circle. Some people put theirs to the outside, but for me, if I put it on the outside, it's more likely to catch on my clothes. So I actually always put mine to the inside, and then it kind of tucks in behind the beads. Alrighty, so we're gonna start threading onto the other end of the memory wire. And the way that I do this is I actually take the beads off on the right side, oops, making sure that I don't pull it from the other end, and I take them off about three at a time, and I hold them in my hand like this in the order that they came off. So long as I don't turn them over, we'll be fine. And it's pretty, it's pretty much okay with this one because we know that they're going in the in the right order, and there's there's no great um, great design here. But we're just going to feed them off there and onto the wire in the order they came off. And sometimes you have difficulty finding the end of your memory wire, but that's okay. 
threading in them on. Now if you had a really complex design, you'd just have to be super careful about not disrupting the order of them as you go. So you can do it this way, or you can actually bring them to the end of the wire too. I'll show you that. I'm just going to push those all the way right down to the end, right down so they're sitting right at the loop, all the way down. Now you can do it this way, which is the way I tend to do it. I push the, the beads right close to the end and I just feed them off the wire there and onto this wire just nice and easily as they go. That to me works better than holding them and then they don't, you know that they're always in the right order. Just push these ones up. I've got my two middle ones there together. So this works quite well. So there's my first lot. I'm just going to pop that wire out of the way and push these all the way down to the end. Isn't that so pretty? I just love this combination of the purple and the hematite. I know I said it before but it's gorgeous. Okay, so remember we started on the right and we went to the left. So this time we actually start on the left. Now with this bracelet, it's not going to matter because each end is exactly the same. But if I had a combination of um, something that was different, maybe on this side and this side, then I would need to go from right to left and left to right and right to left again. But I'm actually not going to worry about that because I know that this is exactly the same, so I'm just going to feed it back on. I'm actually going to feed on all the beads and I'll come back and show you how to finish. Alright, I've got all my beads on except my last one and I, before I did that I wanted to make sure that I checked that they are going to sit right and they do. So um, just making sure that when the, the bracelets are stacked correctly that the beads the focal bead is sitting between these two bicones here so that they're going to kind of hold it in place. And I've got my finger on this um, end here. Now there's a question here, and I always struggle with this, with the, um, when you're making a memory wire bracelet. So the first thing is to make sure obviously that all the beads are pulled right down to the bottom and there's no gaps. But I always struggle with whether or not I should put on another bead. <laughs> If I put on this bead, it is very tight and you can see there's barely enough there to make a, another loop. Um, if I leave it off, I have to trim some off. I'm going to try and leave it on and just do a small loop and we'll see what happens. Jewellery making honestly is all about trial and error. I spend lots of time undoing what I've done just as much as putting beads on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take that piece of wire in the jaws of my pliers again and just make a loop just like I did before. Just holding um, everything, making sure that those beads are nice and tightly down and just giving it a good twist. Whoops. <laughs> and just working it until it closes the loop. And I'm actually finding that that loop is going to have to be a little bit smaller so just moving to the end of my pliers a bit. How are we going? Sometimes when you've got a really tight um, end like this one, what you can do is take your chain nose pliers and just give your loop a squeeze to close it. It's, it's less likely to um, catch on your clothes if it's closed as opposed to being a perfect loop and slightly open. And I'm actually going to go to the other end and I'm going to do the same thing just to give it a bit of a squeeze. There we go. Just to make sure it's nice and tightly closed. And there you go. There's the memory wire bracelet. We fitted on all of our beads and we managed to get this nice focal bead happening here. So that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new project and that helps me to grow my channel and therefore um, helps me to be able to bring you more. 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.